Good morning. Well, one of the things we find missing from this story as well is that when Pilate was trying to get out of this problem of handing Jesus over for execution, he realises that the man comes from the north of the country and therefore comes from a part of the country which is under Herod's jurisdiction. So he sent him to Herod. He said, let's see what Herod makes of this. Now, Herod had, of course, executed John the Baptist, but he too was a very sort of nervous type of person and very superstitious. He'd heard about Jesus' ministry and he had, in fact, longed to see him, but hadn't actually seen him personally. And when he comes, he says, well, okay, now show us a miracle. Let's, let's see what you're like. Let's see if what I can do about it. And Jesus just ignores him, rejects him completely. So Herod just puts a robe on him and sends him back to Pilate. He says, do what you like with the man. I'm handing on responsibility again. I'm not going to make a decision about this. We can't execute anyway. I'm handing him back to you for execution. And then we find, as I said before yesterday, they challenged Pilate and they said, we have no king but Caesar. And Pilate knew he had to make a decision now because if this report had gone to Caesar and come back, he could be in great trouble. He was in trouble, actually. They, all those people who had been appointed by Sejanus, the Roman senator, were in trouble. And shortly after the death of Jesus, he was transferred from Judah to an outpost in Gaul, which is now modern-day France. And later on, he was sent a message to asking him to suicide. See, the idea of suicide was you committed suicide and you said, Caesar is king, Caesar is lord, and then you suicided. That meant you kept all your estates or your family kept all your estates. If you had to be executed, then you lost all your estates. We find this as well, of course, in Britain with the um, medieval executions that took place at the Tower of London. When the person's about to be executed, they always stand up and say, I am a loyal servant of his majesty or her majesty. I'm a loyal servant and a subject to the king or to the queen. And then they were executed. And you wonder why they said that. Well, by saying that, their families kept all their estates. If they didn't say that, then their families would have all their estates forfeited. And the same thing is happening here now. As we look at it, we look back into it. Uh, Pilate himself is told... He must, he must suicide, and therefore his family could keep the estates, which he actually did. So the story goes on, but we are jumping a long way into the future. Now we're talking about the actual day of crucifixion itself. Jesus went out carrying not the big cross as is often imagined in our portraits, but a cross piece. It is a piece of wood to which his hands were going to be tied and nailed, and that will be attached to the great upright posts that were standing just outside Jerusalem, the place of execution. Yes, he fell under those particular, that particular weight. He was a strong man, but he had been scourged almost to the point of death. And in fact, it's so difficult for him to carry the cross that they actually ask another person to carry it, Simon, to come along and carry the cross for him. And he does so, up to the place of execution. He is going to the destiny the Father had planned for him. And he is going there willingly, as I said before, because that is the way that you and I were going to receive eternal life. We'll be coming to it again on Holy Week. We'll be thinking about it. We'll be praying about it. But remember, this was the price that had to be paid. Why? I don't know. Theologians try to ask why. They don't know either. It's nice to make up clever dis uh, ideas about why it had to happen and then share it as if it was fact. But we're dealing with something here far greater than human history. We deal with a plan that God had devised before he created the world. He knew before he created it that man is going to fall. You see, he knew Satan had entered the garden. He knew Satan was tempting Eve. He knew Eve would tempt Adam. He knew it all before he created it. He could have stepped in at any point and said, stop it. You would not to do that. But he doesn't. He knows he's going to fall. 
and he knows that the only way to pay for that fall would be to come into the world himself and die on the cross. But that's the decision he chooses. He goes to the cross for a purpose, and that purpose is that so you and I can rise with him from the dead, that we need never fear death again. See, you and I are a new creation. We're not part of the old creation. In Adam, as the scriptures tell us, in Adam, all die, every one of us. And so this physical body you see in front of you now is going to die. Have no doubt about that. It's going to die. Your bodies are going to die. But because Jesus has granted you eternal life, he will give you a fresh new body. A body, first of all, which will be with him in paradise. And that body, we don't know quite what form it'll take, but it'll be a powerful body, far more powerful than anything you have here, and recognizable. Remember, Jesus, after he rose from the dead, was recognizable as the same person. So all of these things are yours as well. But in order to do that, he had to die. We continue this tomorrow.